When will Bitcoin's extreme volatility go away? Over time, I think the symptom of extreme volatility due to Bitcoin's adoption growth and the fiat credit cycle will fade. As ownership broadens and adoption stabilizes, the scale of inflows and outflows relative to the total market capitalization will decline. And when that happens, another powerful stabilizing mechanism will begin to emerge. The use of Bitcoin not just as an investment, but as a unit of account and hurdle rate for capital allocation. We are already seeing this in the form of the BTC yield metric used by Bitcoin treasury companies, which measure performance in terms of Bitcoin per share rather than dollars per share. Over the next decade, more businesses may adopt similar frameworks, pricing future cash flows and investment performance directly in Bitcoin. This shift could introduce a natural stabilizer to Bitcoin's purchasing power. In a Bitcoin-denominated system, market price signals begin to balance themselves. When Bitcoin's purchasing power falls, it will mean not enough investors are allocating capital to productive enterprises. Yet that same decline makes future cash flows and profits appear more attractive in Bitcoin terms, which draws investment back into production. The result is greater output of real goods and services, which ultimately strengthens Bitcoin's purchasing power again. Conversely, when Bitcoin's purchasing power rises too quickly, it may reflect too much investment in productive enterprises. High Bitcoin purchasing power makes goods appear cheap and risk-taking less appealing because profits and cash flows are lower when measured in Bitcoin. As margins compress, some producers exit, supply contracts, and the purchasing power of Bitcoin gradually moves back toward equilibrium. In this way, the system develops a built-in feedback loop. Short-term shifts in price send market signals that guide human action and resource allocation in ways that restore balance. The very pursuit of profit in a free market becomes the mechanism that stabilizes Bitcoin's purchasing power over time. Yes, free markets work, and they work best with good money. This doesn't mean Bitcoin will be perfectly non-volatile. Even on a Bitcoin standard, external shocks could still influence its price, such as natural disasters, wars, technological disruptions, or shifts in population and productivity. Overall, it likely would become significantly less volatile than today, removing much of the painful boom and bust behavior driven by adoption growth and by the fiat credit cycle. Once Bitcoin becomes the monetary base of the global economy, it will decouple from the inflationary and deflationary cycles of dollar credit. At that point, global liquidity will no longer expand and contract through debt creation, but instead through productivity and savings. This marks the transition from a debt-based economy to a savings-based economy, where monetary stability arises naturally from the laws of thermodynamics rather than central bank policy. If Bitcoin's volatility exists today because of adoption growth and fiat credit cycles, then its eventual stability would come when both have matured. At that point, Bitcoin will be deeply integrated into the global economy. It will not only serve as a store of value, but also as collateral, a unit of account, and the ultimate benchmark for measuring financial performance. In such an environment, Bitcoin could begin to rise in a nearly uninterrupted fashion for long periods of time, not in a speculative bubble, but through continuous repricing of all other assets against an immutably fixed monetary base. This is what it would look like for Bitcoin to go straight up. In the fiat world, inflation drives prices higher. In the Bitcoin world, deflation drives prices lower. The only asset that goes up consistently is the perfectly scarce monetary asset at the center. As technology continues to make everything cheaper in real terms, it will likely exhibit the mirror image of what fiat currencies have done for the last century, a steady appreciation in purchasing power that feels almost as natural and inevitable as consumer price inflation once did. A decade from now, Bitcoin's rise may appear smooth, even boring, but that calm surface will hide the most profound transformation in economic history. Prices will fall gently over time, capital allocation will become more rational, and savings will compound in real terms without government and central bank distortions. 
Bitcoin may not go straight up today because the world is still learning what it is and global liquidity is still governed by fiat credit cycles. But once the world understands and once it becomes the benchmark for value itself, it will no longer need to spike upward in discovery. It will simply ascend permanently. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time.